Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bharatiya, and welcome to another episode of TFIR Success Stories, where we are covering how companies are leveraging Linode's cloud native and open source technologies to build their own infrastructure and services. Today, we have with us James Hunt, Director of R&D at Stark and Vane, one of the leading cloud native infrastructure consulting firms. James, Stark and Vane, as we all know, is known for its expertise in Cloud Foundry, and you are also expanding. You're going beyond Cloud Foundry and offering services around Kubernetes, or basically you are evolving with your own customers and helping them in their own cloud native journey. So can you tell me a bit more about your focus? How has the company evolved? As the industry and the marketplace has changed, we've adapted along with it. Uh, so we believe very strongly in the right tool for the right job. Uh, and while we do definitely still think Cloud Foundry is the best platform as a service, hands down, for application developers, the 12-factor way is a little bit restrictive in some cases. Uh, things like lift and shift or data services are just a better fit on Kubernetes. Uh, we're also helping people with Docker and Docker Compose-based workloads uh, and, and just generally getting into a, a with our clients and figuring out what is the right tool for the right job based on what they need to get out of their platform. So what got you interested in data protection? Data protection, or as you may know, backups, uh, is not at all a, uh, a, a good, sexy area to work in. There's not a lot of interesting problems, I don't think, to solve, or people don't think so. Uh, but when we first started looking at a solution many years ago about how do we back up the data that's in either Cloud Foundry deployed services or even the bits of the platform that support Cloud Foundry, we realized there wasn't a ton of cloud native uh, solutions. And what we ended up building was something based off of essentially pipes of data. Uh, and, and that abstraction, which worked really well for Unix and Linux, also worked well for data protection. What we ended up finding, though, was that it's about more than just keeping a copy of your data for a rainy day when something goes horribly, horribly wrong. And instead, it's really a way of transferring data between different points in time or space. Uh, we, uh, we, we think of backups as something you do, and then if somebody drops a database or a data center catches fire, you still have the data that you otherwise would have lost. But you can also think of it for other workloads, uh, things like data copies for test and dev integration. Uh, we use uh, Shield and CF Protect to do uh, upgrades of data services, uh, similar to Blue Green for application. And, and all of those types of uh, what I would class as advanced applications of data protection just fascinate uh, me and my team. Why did you choose Linode? There are so many other options out there. So I've personally been a Linode customer since they were Slice host, uh, which was, I mean, that's dating me a bit, but that's, I think, back in 2008. Uh, and I've always been very happy with their tech stack. It's been very stable and solid. Their support is really good. Uh, and when we met up, I met up with them back at KubeCon, I think it was 2018, and they were, they were hawking their new LKE beta, uh, the Linode Kubernetes engine. So I signed up for that, and we, we, we mucked around with that. We played with that for a while. And when it finally went GA is when we decided, this is, this is why we're going to move all of our stuff over to this. Um, and it's, it's a good cost model. It's easy to understand. I don't need a pricing calculator. Uh, to understand how much Linode's going to cost me as, a, as an infrastructure. Um, and it's just everything we've wanted to do, it's been able to do. So very happy with our Linode arrangement. What other, you know, as you said, you, you have been a Linode customer for a long time. Uh, what, what, what other things were there that uh, uh, helped you pick them? So one of the things that was, was fascinating that I've never experienced with any other cloud provider was their support got me in touch. So I was, I was having an issue with um, the, they, they integrated their node balancers with the LKE. So when you spin up a, a service type in Kubernetes of type load balancer, normally it goes off in like an Amazon, it'll provision an ELB or an ALB or whatever other LBs they have. Uh, Google will set up a load balancer for you if it's on GKE. Linode, uh, that terminates at a node balancer. And the node balancer is a network aware proxy, essentially of TCP traffic. Well, when we spun up our first pods behind a node balancer on LKE back when it was still in beta, uh, we noticed the node balancer dashboard in the cloud manager, which is the, the, the analog to AWS console, 
uh, was showing that half of the back ends in our two node cluster were down. And so I opened a ticket, as you do, and uh, they actually, the support people, you know, ran through some basic stuff. And then when it was outside their realm, they called in experts from the, the, L- like the people on the front lines building the LKE solution. And I actually got to talk to their solutions engineers, and we got some really deep technical deep dives into this, uh, what was going on. And I, I've never walked away from that complicated of a support ticket uh, appreciative of what the actual scope of the issue was. Normally, it's a, uh, oh yeah, if you do this, it fixes it, close ticket. Um, that that's all there is, and and no, you can't talk to anybody uh, who knows what's going on. So that was that was refreshing uh, from having dealt with uh, most of the cloud providers for the last ten years. Uh, and yet another reason why I, I, I absolutely love Linode, and I will I will talk about that for as long as you want, Swap. Now, <laughs> so let's first talk about what kind of cloud infrastructure you yourself have. And how does Linode come into the picture? So you leverage their technologies for your own infrastructure, number one. Number question is that Linode is much more than what it used to be five years now. Again, now they're offering GPU, they're offering Kubernetes engine, and they're offering software-defined storage as well, which is based on stuff. So so talk a bit about your infrastructure, why you need Linode, and what Linode services or features you are leveraging. Way back in the day, uh, all of the Stark and infrastructure was run on PWS. Uh, we were a Cloud Foundry shop. Uh, we didn't have enough workloads to warrant an entire Cloud Foundry uh, because, as you know, Cloud Foundry is a very large footprint. Uh, I think the smallest pivotal VM we've gotten it down to is something like seven VMs. Uh, and, and we just didn't need to run that size of a Cloud Foundry publicly. So most of our stuff was on PWS. It, that also gave us the, the distinct opportunity to uh, dog food the, the PaaS solution of CF pushing stuff and, and that dealing with services and the marketplace and all that stuff. Um, we, when, we dis, when we built Shield Cloud, what we needed was something beefier than PWS. We needed something larger than Cloud Foundry that wasn't uh, tied into 12-factor. Uh, because what we're doing for all of the Shield Cloud customers is everyone gets their own Shield instance, which, which is currently a pod. Uh, which is very hard to do with, with CF and its statelessness requirements. Uh, so we went shopping around, we looked at EKS, we looked at, uh, we eventually found LKE when it went into beta. Uh, and when they mentioned that they were doing object storage, that was the, the, la- the, the second shoe to drop, as it were, uh, because Shield needs someplace to put all of those backup archives. Uh, and so what we, we do is we, we have a, a couple of LKE clusters that we run all the Shield Cloud stuff on, We have another cluster that we run, uh, what you would consider the StarkandWayne.com infrastructure. Uh, That's our blog, our website, uh, a bunch of internal tools. Uh, And and those all transitioned quite nicely from PWS onto LKE. Uh, So we're using Kubernetes Engine. Uh, We're using the the OBJ object storage. Uh, It's an S3 workalike. Uh, It's been fantastic. The pricing is right. The performance is, is perfect. Uh, and we're also using node balancing in front of the, the LKE for, for HTTP ingress. Uh, we haven't gotten into Cloud Firewall, although that I believe is in beta, and I'm excited to play around with that. Um, trying to think what else we use. I think that's about it for the catalog. So, so once again, James, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure's all mine. <laughs>